Thank you very much. Um, what I'd like to share with you today are some of our results in the evaluation of the Oncomine pan cancer cell free assay in the, in the profiling of liquid biopsies and how these panels can help accelerate translational research studies. So these are my disclosures for today's presentation, as well as disclaimers. So the presence of free nucleic acids in the blood or other fluids has been known for some time. Standing back to the first reports in 1948, uh, when free nucleic acids were detected in the plasma of patients. Almost 30 years later, the interest in cell-free DNA and, and RNA surfaced again when a number of scientists began looking at the genomics of cell-free DNA in cancer patients and demonstrated that they possessed um, tumor-associated aberrations. Since then, there has been increasing interest in cell-free nucleic acids um, with what seems to be an explosion of work over the past decade. And this timeline just shows some of the uh, discoveries leading up to that tsunami of work in recent years. There are many types uh, of species of nucleic acids that can be obtained from liquid biopsies. And these include circulating tumor cells, uh, cell-free DNA, RNA, microRNA, mitochondrial DNA, and they can be also encapsulated in, in exosomes. And this allows for a variety of profiling uh, across both DNA and RNA, which been, can be complemented uh, with standard biochemical protein testing or more sophisticated proteomic profiling. While we most often immediately think about blood, there are other types of liquid biopsy sources, and so these include urine, sputum, uh, semen, vaginal fluids, ascites, or, or other secretions. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in the slide. Um, but by now, most of you are aware of the advantages and disadvantages of liquid biopsy profiling. But briefly, obtaining these types of samples are largely non-invasive, which means that there are possibilities for repeated sampling during the course of a patient's clinical management. Um, there are implications for using these liquid biopsy biomarkers for early disease detection, inform on prognosis, inform on response to treatment or disease progression. The high throughput technologies that are available today for profiling solid tissues have been adapted to suit the specific challenges associated with cell-free nucleic acids. And this enables assays to be performed in routine uh, clinical uh, settings. And as we begin to identify more biomarkers that are prognostic and predictive, the translation of these biomarkers in the liquid biopsy space provides an added dimension to personalized medicine. Uh, liquid biopsy profiling is already influencing clinical trial design and the related correlative studies. The challenges, however, are the biology of cancers are quite complex. We know that cancers are heterogeneous. They can be multi-clonal as well as multifocal. We lose the spatial relationships of these nucleic acids and how they might be represented in the solid tumor, whether that is from the primary or the metastatic site. And this can be complicated further by the presence of several metastatic sites. Other factors uh, that will influence the success of liquid biopsy profiling is the ability of the tumor to shed that material uh, systemically. Nucleic acid shedding through apoptosis and necrosis are part of normal cellular processes, but in, if an intervention influences these cellular processes, say, for example, chemotherapy, this would need to be taken into consideration when you're thinking about doing liquid biopsy uh, profiling in terms of collection or interpreting the results. Um, the amount of circulating tumor, DNA or RNA will vary from patient to patient and the yields obtained could be very low. So technologies need to be able to deal with low input and consider uh, aspects of their limits of detection. Um, there are also uh, things to consider in terms of the sampling effect. Some variants may be present at very low levels, so it's conceivable that when you repeat that same sample, uh, you could reveal discordant calls. So these are the types of things we need to think about when we're uh, profiling these liquid biopsy sources. Our work at the OICR focuses on improving the clinical management of early breast and prostate cancer. 
we have developed in our lab signatures that could inform on risk and could potentially stratify patients to targeted therapies. However, we wanted to identify whether there are profiling panels that could help support this translational work. What I'm going to present today are the results of a small proof of concept study where we profiled a series of CTDNAs and their matched solid tumors from breast to lung and a series of tumors of unknown origin using the pan cancer panel and the Oncomine comprehensive assay. We also profiled urine specimens collected from men who entered the clinic on suspicion of prostate cancer following their digital rectal exam. In this study, we profiled the DNA and the RNA abstracted from the urine using the Oncomine comprehensive assay. I just wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about the limit of detection that we obtained in our panel evaluation. I had previously mentioned that the yield of CTDNA is variable. We've seen a range of anywhere from zero to 50 nanograms of CTDNA obtained per mill of plasma, averaging about 11 nanograms. That's not very much material to work with. What we wanted to do is to see how low we can go in terms of input. To assess this, we used a commercial control with known variance at specific frequencies, and we decreased the input from the optimal 20 nanograms and found that we were able to recapitulate the theoretical limits of detection, as you can see in the graphs below. As we lowered the amount of input, the ability to have the variant called or detected was compromised. Um, although a variant might not have been called, if you go into the actual uh, sequencing results, you'll see that the variant was actually detected. So what we found was that 0.5% uh, limit of detection could be achieved with 10 nanograms of input and a 0.125% limit of detection at 20 nanograms of input could also be obtained using this um, assay. So this slide is just to remind you of our methods and the samples that we used in this study. And this is a result of the uh, study with the matched CTDNAs uh, and solid tissues. For each case, there are two to three assay results. The first sample to the left of each set is a CTDNA profiled with the CTDNA pan cancer panel. The middle sample is a solid tumor, which was profiled with the Oncomine comprehensive assay. And the last sample to the right is a solid tumor, which was also profiled with the CTDNA pan cancer panel. We wanted to look at the concordance between the CTDNA and solid tumor, so we used the CTDNA assay on the solid tumor. As an added method of validation, we used the Oncomine comprehensive assay to the solid tumor. Arrows point to those variants that were detected in both the CTDNA and the solid tumor. We see the usual suspects uh, for breast cancer, including mutations in PIK3CA and, and TP53, as well as the detection of the HER2 amplification, both in the CTDNA um, and solid tumor. Uh, for the lung cancers, we see mutations in KRAS as well as P53, and a variety of variants um, in the tissues of unknown origin. Um, we were actually quite pleased with re these results and the level of concordance or discordance that we observed is in keeping with what you might expect when taking into account the specificity of each assay and the content overlap. We're continuing to analyze this data informatically beyond the default filter set settings uh, to look at uh, various levels of detection. We then moved on to profiling urine from men who were seen in the clinic on suspicion of prostate cancer. The urine was obtained following their digital rectal exam and extracted for both DNA and RNA. Because there was limited DNA, we prioritized an NGS-based meth methylation assay by uh, using a custom-designed methylation panel, and any remaining DNA was used to perform the Oncomine comprehensive assay. For the RNA that was extracted, I mentioned that we have derived signatures that could predict risk for early prostate cancer. One of those components is an RNA signature, so we profiled the RNA against the custom nanostring gene expression panel. With the remaining RNA, we used the RNA component of the Oncomine comprehensive assay that contains fusions associated with prostate cancer. 
there were two samples with sufficient DNA after um, the methylation assay. Using Oncomine filter, we identified that there was an actionable mutation in, in one of those samples, as you can see here, the MET mutation. For the RNA portion of the assay, we're real, really pleased to have detected the timp herb fusion product, which is found in approximately 50% of prostate cancers. And as you can see, we also identified uh, other fusions uh, among these urine samples. In collaboration with Thermo Fisher, our prostate cancer initiative has led to the development of a 38 gene um, NGS methylation panel. Um, it's been previously demonstrated in solid tissues to outperform methylation specific PCR. And we wanted to extend the application of this panel um, into DNA extracted from urine. What we found was that the sequencing quality and results obtained from urine-derived DNA was comparable, comparable to what was seen uh, in DNA that we processed from FFP tissues. We're currently obtaining the match biopsies from these patients, and we'll run the assay to look at the overall concordance between the match samples. In this figure, you can see that the extent of methylation in a subset of these genes, but unfortunately, I'm unable to share with you uh, the, the genes themselves at this time. Uh, but you can see the patterns of differential methylation across the different samples as it relates to grade, which is noted uh, to the right. Um, what I hope I've demonstrated here today is that these validated panels and associated chemistries can support discovery, translation, and clinical grade profiling to address the different clinical management needs of cancer patients in the future. Liquid biopsy profiling alone, or when integrated with solid tissue profiling, can provide key prognostic and predictive information for early detection or disease monitoring. At the OICR, our group have developed prognostic gene signatures for hormone receptor positive early breast cancers, in addition to signatures that predict chemotherapy benefits based on solid tissue profiling. Our goal is to eventually extend this into the liquid biopsy space to determine whether prognostic significance is maintained. Similarly, with respect to early prostate cancer, we have developed and validated a prognostic signature for GRADE and working towards developing this in urine, which is the ideal fluid because of the anatomy of the male urogenital system. So in summary, NGS-based profiling for liquid biopsies is a high-throughput method for identifying key biomarkers. The Oncomine family of products with solid tissue and liquid biopsy profiling provides high-quality and robust data for discovery, translation research, and in future, clinical diagnostics. The key features of this assay are that it requires very minimal input, it's suitable for FFP specimen and nucleic acids that have been extracted from liquid biopsies. There's a robust workflow, they're validated panels, and have an integrated informatics workflow and report generation. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge our collaborators, both uh, at Queen's University, as well as Thermo Fisher, as well as to the diagnostic development team at the OICR. Thank you very much, and I'd be happy to take your questions.